Hello everyone and welcome back to the WS2 API Manager series. This video will provide the insight of API keys usage in WS2 API Manager. Let's start. Here is the quick agenda for the session. We will see about API key based access of API. What are the prerequisites for API keys? The process to generate the API keys and how to validate the same. What are the restrictions we can apply using the API key? How to use API key in the API request? How to change the validity of the API key and the live demo? So the API key based access is the simplest form of the security for the API access by the client applications. That means mostly used, it is mostly used for the application basis. So for example, there is one application that needs to call the other application API. So this is called a system to system communication. In that particular use case, we can go for API key based approach. So the API key in WS2 API manager is a JWT, which is a JSON web token, which carries application and subscription details. It is basically independent of the user and mostly dependent upon the application. These can be generated by the developer portal or the developer portal REST APIs. This can be generated on per application basis. For example, there is one API that has been created and there are five different applications that are going to consume that particular API. In that case, each application needs to subscribe to that particular API and there will be a separate API keys per application basis. And finally, the API key must be generated before the application uh, is going to the subscribe uh, to the particular API. For it, that means we must subscribe to the API first, then we must go for the, the API key generation because during the generation process, it checks what all different subscriptions are there. So if we generate in advance before subscription the API key, it won't work for the API's access. What are the different prerequisites for API key generation? So WC2 API manager uses a self-contained JSON web token as an API key. And this JWT access token is generated via the developer portal without communicating with the key manager. That means WC2 API manager doesn't talk to the key manager component for generation of the API key. There are certain prerequisites that are required for the API key generation. It should be a valid signed JWT using the primary key store private key of the developer portal. The sample format for the token is Base64 header, Base64 payload and the signature path. The public certificate of the private key that is used to sign the tokens should be added to the trust store under the gateway certificate alias. So mostly it is uh, it is basically required in case of the distributed deployment when uh, there is a separate developer portal or the control plane is different and the data plane is different and hence we need to import the developer portal certificate to the apm gateway client trust store using the same alias that means you think it as in this way that there is one system with the help of you have generated the key and there is one system who is going to validate the key because it is api gateway that that validates the key so if we have generated the, the api key via the developer portal then we must have the public certificate of the private key of the developer portal inside the gateway then only it will work and all these prerequisites are applicable only when uh, the certificates are different and it is usually in the case when we have a distributed deployment kind of a pattern so in case of default certificate which is shipped with the product as used by the developer portal and the gateway nodes no prerequisites are required that means it will take the default certificates for signing and validation purpose so how to generate the api key so there are two ways so first is through the developer portal user interface so the developer needs to log into the developer portal go to create the particular application and with the help of after creating the application the developer basically uh, navigates to the uh, api key section and it generates the key make sure the subscription happens first before the api key generation 
so this is the use case when the developer portal is not exposed to your external clients in case it has been exposed to the external clients the clients can directly log in to their respective uh, tenant uh, developer portal account and they can follow the process second option is through the developer portal rest apis so w store api manager also provides the rest apis to generate the api key so we can follow the steps using the rest apis to generate the api key so how does the validation happens for this api key so as you can see in this uh, particular flow there is a client application that uh, makes a, a particular call to the api using that uh, api key the request goes to the gateway and the gateway which stores basically the developer portal public certificate inside the gateway certificate alias so what happens at the gateway layer gateway basically validates the token signature and the subscription okay so the signature validation subscription happens validation happens if it get is passed then it is goes the call is going to the backend service else it is returned to the client application with client side error api key restrictions so think it about like somebody has generated the api key which is a jwt and uh, it has been shared with your client application or your client application is using the same but what if it has been compromised so post generation of the api key anyone having access to the same can use it to call the respective apis and number of times okay so in case it has been compromised and unauthorized access may lead to unfair usage of the api and in case of it has been monetized so there may call be the commercial impact as well so wso2 api manager provides two approaches to mitigate this kind of an issue so while generation of the api key we can enforce two different restrictions first ip address restriction that means that particular api call can happen from a particular ip address only currently it allows ipv4 ipv6 or ip range insider notation second is http referral restriction when http referral restriction is enabled that means it basically validates the source of the api hit so we can define a particular url or we can define a particular subdomain with a wildcard as well or any subdomain or the path url in a single domain using the wildcard strings so now how to use this api key in an api request there are two ways to use this api while calling a particular api first inside the header so we can specify the api key in the header like this so this curl request shows it is calling a particular api pizza shake api menu resource uh, with this header called uh, accept application json at the minus h api key and where you have to provide this api key second option is to in the form of the query parameter so when we pass this api key in the query parameter we must do a url encoding to this particular value this is to avoid in case of the special characters which comes and may lead to your api key authentication failure so wc2 says that you must do a url encoding of this particular in and send it inside the parameter in the query parameter as you can see like this next is to check the validity because it is also important that if you are going to rotate the particular key after a certain duration so you can do the rotation via different ways but it is also important to see what kind of validity you are going to use <coughs> for this api key so api key which is generated by the developer portal there is a pop up menu where you can define the particular validity the default is minus 1 indicating it will never expire or you can uncheck that option and you specify the value in seconds in the pop up menu okay and if you are going to call uh, via the if you are going to generate the api key via the rest apis developer portal rest apis you can define inside the validity period parameter so that's all the conceptual detail about the api key now we'll go through a live demo where we'll create a new application and we'll subscribe it to the pizza shack then we'll generate the key and we'll plot 
the API resource using this API key in the header and the query parameter. Okay, so we have opened the uh, API manager. Let's log into API manager. So meanwhile, let's see the all the steps which we have seen. So we'll create a new application of this thing. So we'll go to the developer portal. So this is our publisher portal, and I will use the Pizza Chef API. So open in the developer portal. Okay, so let's go to application, create a new application. Uh, we'll define the per token footage as 10 per minute and this API key based application. We'll save it. Another important thing is to verify inside the publisher portal is that whether the API key based access has been enabled or not. So we'll go here in the runtime configuration. You will see the application security currently it is not checked so we'll select this we'll save and deploy so you have to delete one on the revision enabled and select the gateway Okay, so now let's see the runtime is is allowed OR2, which is a token based OR2 token, and the API key based security has been enabled. Now go to the developer portal, go to the subscriptions, we'll go to subscribe APIs. We have a pizza check, so we'll select the unlimited. Let's verify. So Pizza Check has only two tiers available here. We have to enable the bronze tier as well. We'll go to this portal configurations, <coughs> subscriptions, and enable the bronze tier as well, and save it. Okay. So now click on subscribe APIs, the Pizza Check, and we have bronze tier. We'll subscribe this good now go to the api key so we have two api keys one for the production one for the sandbox so we can have two separate api keys per environment basis so right now we are going to use api key for production as you can see from if we don't apply restriction the run option is checked the ip address we can define the ip address as well as the range and when we can define the referrer with the particular URL or the pattern to generate the key. Currently, we are choosing none. Generate. So, by default, it is of an infinite validity period, means it is never going to expire. If we check this, let's say I am going to generate the key for one hour. Generate. We copy this key. Okay. And once we have copied this key, we have we must store into somewhere we open this. okay so we have this api key with me now let's go to this api so far we have done the subscription to the bronze tier generated the key now follow the get many resource we'll go to the pizza check we go to try out select the option using api key you can generate the test key here if you don't generate it will it won't work so for the time being we'll use the system generated api key for calling it we'll copy the request go to our notepad paste the request copy our api key 
So in this scenario, you can see the APA key is being passed into the headers. Copy the request and go to the terminal. Uh, new tab. So we just paste the SQL request and pip it cool so we are able to access it the second option is to call the api using the api key by passing into the query parameter okay so what is the approach for this so for this what you have to do uh, url encoding url encoder so we have to this API key we are encoded. You can if it is getting done programmatically, we, this can also be done through some of the libraries in the Java code you can use. So this is our we are encoded API key. So first we are going to use okay, paste it here remove it from here and we'll do like this api key is equal to so we are going to go to api key to the request go to the terminal hit the request using this approach cool so this completes our demo where we have successfully hit the request using the API key in the header as well as the query parameter. So that's all for this uh, particular demo. So we have successfully completed all this steps using the demo. So thank you very much for this session and uh, do not forget to subscribe to my channel to get the latest updates and the latest tutorials on Dublin 2.